What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video with Cup of Code. Um, this, uh, starting off with a picture that was sent to me by a, a listener. I just thought this was really funny. Uh, program is while coding. It doesn't work. Why? It works. Why? <laughs> How often do you feel that way sometimes? So today we're uh, doing two different things. We're one, we're sticking with uh, NumPy. Uh, and this is going to be more of the crash course. So not just using NumPy, NumPy to do some fancy array stuff, but starting to see how NumPy is advantageous, not just for speed, but also for other mathematical operations that we're going to be utilizing for AI, ML, and DL. Um, in addition, we're also going to be using something called Jupyter Notebooks. Now, um, Jupyter Notebooks uh, used to be referred to as IPython Notebooks. Um, and one of the reasons, let me see, where do I have... Ba, ba, ba. In one of the previous videos, you can see it if you checked the upload from um, September 17th, 2017. It was how to install uh, Python and PyCharm. And I used Anaconda as the download package from uh, Continuum Analytics. <clears throat> the advantage of that is it comes with Jupyter Notebook already installed. So all you'd have to do then, I have here opened up Command Prompt. Uh, you'd open up your terminal. And all we're going to do is type in Jupyter Notebook. And you're going to see what it's going to do. It's going to actually open up automatically and start a kernel. And that's exactly what it did. It opened up um, in Chrome. And now I have here all of the different uh, pieces. You're seeing essentially my hard drive um, for where, where it goes to in, in terms of... Uh, let me do this. I just want to bring the window down a little bit. Give me one second. Let's go like a dish. I want to make sure I can get everything I need. Come on. This is more annoying than not sometimes. All right, that'll do for now. So we have uh, this is everything it's seeing we have we have our current old network that we're going to be working on um crash course what we're going to be going into today i also have convolutional neural networks and i have a an um, automated neural network a general neural network that we're going to do with night notebooks so what this is is it opened up a jupyter notebook and i'm going to go into crash course i created this folder i'll show you how i create these folders another time within this folder i have four different notebooks that's this i p y n b and then these are images that I have I used in my notebook. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click Crash Course. And you're going to see it opened up a new kernel. It tells me here I'm using Python 3. That's what I created this in. And this is just markdown code. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to run through this pretty much in a sequential step-by-step -step line. So it's very similar to what we were doing in uh, PyCharm. This doesn't do debugging so much as it does run code line by line. So it still gives you an idea of what the heck's going on under the hood. So let's start this uh, journey today. NumPy array, if you're familiar with C++ or Java arrays, it's not entirely the same thing. NumPy arrays are more vector matrix in terms of their mathematical implication, as well as how we uh, maneuver around and utilize NumPy arrays. Uh, it's much better at matrix operations, and it's much more optimized for speed. And this matrix operations is exactly why GPUs are better and faster generally than uh, CPUs in terms of speed when we're doing neural networks or deep learning. Um, something you're going to hear a lot about if you try to study AI, ML, DL, it's about the mathematics that's involved, higher level mathematics. And considering all computing stuff and and all ai all ml all, all everything computing is mathematically based every algorithm that a computer system is utilizing is mathematically based it is formula driven um and so too is the work that we do however it is absolutely not necessary to understand the finer fundamental mathematics that goes into building the algorithms and it also is not necessary to understand that math to know how to utilize them and how to manipulate them to get the results you want with that being said it is extraordinarily beneficial over the long haul to understand things like I have here, vector and, ma vector and matrix mathematics, linear algebra, Gaussian distribution, one dimension, two dimension. And I just have here to suggest to go to Khan Academy. I find you can search these things individually and get those 
get those basic understandings down. Um, just so you can conceptually wrap your mind around what the heck the computer's doing when we do particular uh, operations. I certainly, I would not stop learning AI MLDL to start doing this math. I would kind of do it concurrently. So in this first line here of code, I have import NumPy as NP. I'm going to hit shift enter and it's going to run that. So now it tells me it's line number first time I ran that code. So now NumPy is loaded within my Jupyter notebook. Now here I'm creating a variable L and in that L I just have a list one, two, and three. And then I'm having L to call it. That's the same thing as like saying print. So I'm going to hit shift enter and it's giving me my output, my output because I called for L right here and L was a one, two, three list. It's a Python list. Now I'm next line a equals NP dot array calling the array function. And then inside that I'm putting in one, two, and three. It looks like a Python list, but the fact that we're calling NP dot array, it's now going to become an array and we're calling a after that, just like printing it. And sure enough, it tells me it's an array one, two, and three. So, so far it looked very similar. We're going to start to see the differences of these, these two guys. So we're going to loop through both of them. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I just have four E, E's, I use that to represent elements. So four E and L, print L, four E and A, print A. So I'm gonna shift enter through that. So sure enough, it there are three elements, so I'll print it at three times, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have our Python list, and then we have our NumPy array. And you may notice, you say, oh, they're different sizes. Well, this one, the NumPy array has already taken out the um, commas. And that will make more sense later on, but they're still discrete numbers. So this would still be uh, three rows and three columns for both of them. So again, now I have here, it looks the same. So what the hell's the point? Well, let's try to do different things that we've learned with Python. Let's try them on NumPy arrays. So first we're gonna append, append meaning we wanna add to it. So right now we have in the Python list, one, two, three, we wanna say l.append four, and then call l. Let's see if we got it. So we got it. So for a Python list, you can do dot append. Makes sense, we've seen that before. Can we do the same thing for NumPy array? A dot append four, let's call A. Nope, we're gonna get an error because there's no attribute append within NumPy arrays. So we go, all right, so we can add it to the list. We can't add it to NumPy arrays. So let's try something else. Let's, add, let's actually add it in terms of the index. So here I'm saying L is the variable. Let's call L, which is our Python list, which currently right now is one, two, three, four within the Jupyter notebook. And we're saying plus five, and we're saying plus this list five. So let's see if we can add the element. So we're gonna hit shift enter and it worked for the Python list. Makes sense from what we already know. Let's try the same operation on a NumPy array. And you know, you say, Jesus Christ, what the hell's going on? I can't do that either. It tells me the operands could not be broadcast together with the shapes three and two. Um, and what I did here was I had four comma five because we didn't get to add four even with the append method into the NumPy array. So right now, it turns, as far as Jupyter Notebook is concerned, L is one, two, three, four, five, and the Python, the uh, NumPy array is one, two, three. We still haven't been able to manipulate it at all. So I have here, goodness, does NumPy suck? Uh, well, let's see, it does not, I'll tell you that right now, but let's see what we can do. So um, we're gonna do some mathematical operations here. So I'm saying L2 equals an empty list, so a variable equals an empty list. For E in L, L2 dot append E plus E, and then we're calling L2. So this is a for loop, so it's going to go through, um, the L, the list that we have, which is one, two, three, uh, four, five, and we're going to say E plus A. So we're just element plus element. So we're just gonna add everything up. So I'm gonna shift enter through that. So it went through, the first element was one, one plus one is two. Next element was two, two plus two is four. Next element was three, three plus three is six, and so forth. That's how it went through this piece. And again, since our original L was now of a list one, two, three, four, five, that's what it was pulling to do this mathematical operation and then returning it back, appending it into that empty list that we had created up top. So here I have A2, which is an empty variable. We're gonna do A plus A. Let's see if we can get anything out of it. And we do, we got something out of it, awesome. So what we did here is we mathematically, we were able to add an array. And so the array originally, A, that's what we called here, A plus A. You'll recall we had two errors. We never got to do any kind of an append um, or, or addition to it. It was one, two, and three. So by doing one, two, three plus one, two, three, we should have gotten two, four, six. And sure enough, we got a new array of two, four, and six. So, okay, we're, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. So now here I just have that the addition sign in a list does concatenation series where the plus sign in NumPy arrays does vector addition um, or a matrix if we have a matrix. And some people say, what the hell's the difference? Well, a, a matrix is just a rectangular array uh, and a vector is more of a one dimensional array if you wanna look at it that way. 
But again, this a lot of this stuff, I don't want it to make sense to you. I just want you to get in the habit of coding and doing what I'm doing. And over the time of weeks to months, it will solidify, I promise you. So here I have a new variable a3, and it's gonna equal two times a, and then I'm calling a3, that variable. So let's see if we can multiply. And it did, yes. I had to even stop for a second. I was like, wait a second, why? Because I thought I was thinking it was gonna be two, four, six, and then times two. So I was expecting it to be four, eight, 12, but why not? I called a, and this represents a two. And if you recall A, before we got our two errors, we never were able to modulate it or append it. It was still one, two, and three. So two times one, two, and three, that's correct. So good, so we can do multiplication just like that to an array. What do we have here? So we have L equals two times L. So I did the same thing that I did up top. I'm doing it now below. Did we get the same thing? No, so this is very important. The, um, the list repeated itself. If we wanted to do the multiplication, like we got the array here, we'd have to do a for loop. But the when you're taking a Python list and you do a mathematical operation, L times two, L times three, whatever the variable was, it's just going to concatenate that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Whereas with an array, a NumPy array, it actually did the mathematical operation. So we can already see one benefit there. And you may say, all right, big deal. If I had a list, I would just do a for loop. Something you're gonna see later on is that for loops are computationally expensive and they also take much longer. And when we start getting into financial analysis and utilizing artificial intelligence, machine learning on uh, on the financial instruments and, and trading, time is of one of the utmost important pieces other than accuracy, of course, and risk management. But time is utterly important. So let's go through here. So now I have L3, so we have another variable. It's an empty list for E and L, L3.append, E times E. So this is how we could do the multiplication for the Python list. So we have E times E, times e where we're calling L. The L, the most recent L was just one, two, three, four, five. So that's exactly what we're gonna be getting as the output. We're gonna be getting that multiplication. So one, two, three, four, five. So you see that it did the mathematics for it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you may say, why the hell do we have it so many times? Well, for each element, for element in L, do this mathematical operation, and then it's gonna go back into the list. So it's gonna do it for one, one times one is one, and then it's gonna do it for two, two times two is four, three, three times three is 16, four, 16, five, 25. But that was all for one, one count to the element. How many elements did we have in the list? We had five elements, right? Because list L was one, two, three, four, five. So that's that was all done for now one count. Then it's gonna go back and do the same thing for the second count, and then for the third and for the fourth. Um, not beneficial for what we're trying to accomplish here. L4, we have an empty list again for E and L, L4.append E. This is now to the power of three, and then we're calling the L4 list. Now this is, again, the double stars there, the double asterisk means the power two, and the single just means multiplied by. So of course it did it as you know two to the three, three to the three, four to the third, and fifth to the third, and it's gonna do it in that same four count element wise because it's a for loop that we're running here. Let's see what we can do now with the NumPy matrix. So we have a to the power of two, and if you recall, a was one, two, and three. So one, two to the two is four, and three to the two is nine. So that's correct. But you'll notice it did not repeat it three times as though the list is going to do, even if we're doing a for loop. Let's keep going. So we have a5, another empty variable, equals empty.square root a. I just wanted to show you we're gonna call a5. You can even do the square root. Uh, you can call many different methods upon uh, NP arrays. So we're doing a square root. So it did the square root of one, two, and three, accordingly, one, two, and three. And you may say, wait, I thought, you know, the NumPy array was now one, four, nine. Well, no, that's a4. We're still using A, we're still sticking with our one, two, three, A in terms of the variable math that we're doing, so we called A. If I made this to be uh, A4, that would be a totally different ball game. Now I'd be getting very different square roots, and of course that makes more sense, look, one, two, three, now it's using this as that input, but it's not what I originally had. So you always have to look at what your inputs are going to be. New variable A6 equals mp.log of A, and uh, we're gonna call a six. So this is just doing element wise logarithmic. So of element one, element two, element three, but it's also not gonna repeat it many times like the for loops do on the NP, on the uh, Python lists. A seven, a new variable, np dot 
EXP A. Now, before I run this, I'm going to hide, hide that because I want you to see something. Now, this EXP, you're going to think exponent. And you're right, I get it. So we're, you're going to think, okay, we're taking an exponent, we're raising it to um, 1, 2, and 3. That's our original list, and let's call it. And then you're going to sit here and get these outputs, and I really want you to always look at what you get for an output, obviously, but really think about it. How the hell did 1 raised to an exponent get to this? How did 2 and how did 3 get to this? It doesn't make sense if you're thinking of a basic exponentials. But that's why you got to look at the documentation, because if you go to an NP array and you look at the documentation and you're searching NP.EXPA or NP.EXP, you'd know that EXP is e to the x, where e has a value of this value. I think it's called the Ilian function, Ulian, E L. UIN, I believe. Um, you can read that the PC sees it as 2.718 to the first, our first element in the array, 2.718 to the two, our second element, and then to the three in our third element. So it was using our array as the exponents, but the base was this 2.718281, and it goes on and on and on. Um, so again, if something doesn't make sense, always go back to the documentation. Anytime you're using something new, always go to back to the documentation. So the takeaway from this was that operations on a list require a for loop um, to get similar operations, and that's not beneficial because that's going to be very slow. Operations on the array can be treated like a vector, uh, and that's because it is. And if you don't know vector math or analysis and you don't really understand, if you're going through this lesson, you're kind of like, I don't, yeah, all right, fine. What's the big deal? Trust me. When we get down the line, you're going to look back and say, oh, okay, now I get it. That makes sense. All right, guys, that was great for crash course number one uh, with the NumPy arrays. We're going to hit it hard again tomorrow, uh, and soon we're going to get to the end of the 100 days, and then we're going right back into the Python projects. Take it easy, guys.